name is Rachel Fagan. I live in the United States, um, in Pennsylvania specifically. Um, I'm in not one of the big cities, but I'm pretty close to one of the bigger cities. Um, but I live in kind of farmland in Pennsylvania, um, in the suburbs. And I was a teacher for 13 years and I taught a variety of things. I taught mostly younger kids. Um, and I mostly spent time teaching them reading and math, but I did um, spend some time teaching music as well. And um, I have two daughters. Um, they are seven and almost 10. And um, right before the pandemic happened, I actually stepped away from teaching. Um, and I was still teaching music um, to smaller, young preschool kids, um, but that the pandemic really affected everything. <laughs> and um, so I actually stepped away and um, had to take care of my daughters and their schooling here. And then I actually started my own business with life coaching. Um, and so that's what I'm doing now. I'm a life coach and I work with an organization that does some mental health therapy and counseling. And I work with people who are exiting that program, but still want some support. And I also work with some people who maybe don't need mental health counseling, but are looking to work on some goals and, and, and need a plan. And so that's what I spend my time in those, those worlds now. So that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so fantastic. I think I, what is intriguing, interesting for me is that you are doing equal uh, roles as a musician and as well as the life coach, both are important yeah. for your person. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> to, to lead a happy and healthy life, I think we need the music as well as the, the counseling. So yes, yeah. we are so curious to know many facts about uh, life science and as well as the music. And my students have already prepared some questions. So Great. would you allow them to ask the questions or would you like yes. to present something from your side? What sure, you yeah. Yes. So Jagadish, would you like to start first? Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. My name is Jagdish. I'm studying 8th grade at JPT Sailor. My hobbies are reading, playing, and watching movies. My future ambition can be an English teacher. Can I ask a question? Yes, you may ask a question. All of music in the world, in this world. Could you repeat that? What is the role of music in this world? I think music is a way that we as a human race can connect and communicate with, with each other. Um, I think it's our universal language um, and it helps us to connect and relate to each other. And I know for me, music is a very spiritual thing. Um, and so it's a way for me to really connect with other humans and to connect with with the spirit world and i just um i think it's a way that we can all come together um it, it, i think you know each each culture has its own twist on music its own special unique things but then we can all merge them together and come together so i think it's a unifying yeah absolutely right so Thank Lohita, you. Lohita, it's your turn. Hello, ma'am. My name is Lohita Girija. I am studying ninth grade. I am 14 years old. Can I ask one question, ma'am? Yes, please. We heard that you are also an expert in yoga. Could you please tell us about the importance of yoga in our life? Well, I don't know that I'm an expert, but I like to take yoga. I do practice yoga. And yoga actually um, has allowed me to expand on my music a little bit because one of the things that I do with these sound bowls that I'll show you today is I actually go into some yoga classes and play them while other people take the yoga class and it just helps them to kind of relax a little bit more. Um, 
but I like yoga. I'm not, I'm not an athlete. I don't like to exercise very much. It just, it's not my thing, but yoga is a way for me to still be able to stretch and exercise my body, but also connect with my mind and now music as well. Um, and just kind of work the body that I was given and, 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 and stretch it and, um, challenge it. And, and so, um, while I'm not an expert, I do like taking the class. That's my form of exercise where I go to relax and to get my exercise in. Um, but I think everybody needs something in their life where they're moving their body and they're connecting. And, and, and as you, as you grow older and you, you take on some of the things that adults have to take on, it's really important to make sure you take time for yourself too, and not just work all the time and, 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 and do all the adult stuff. You need to have time for yourself and to play and be creative and, and move your body. So that's what it does for me. Um, I wish I was an expert in yoga, but I'm still learning. I'm a student. <laughs> so I guess it's your turn. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. I'm Saina. I'm studying eighth grade. Ma'am, I would like to pose you a question. Can I pose? Yes, please. What music do you like to teach to your students in your school? Oh, well, when I, so when I was a teacher in music, my job was really to just introduce music to students. And that's really where I like to work because I like working with the younger kids um and uh, so really just getting them comfortable exploring their voice and um comfortable playing some basic instruments and moving their bodies so that's really it wasn't a type of music that i liked but really to teach but it was really just introducing students to the world of music and expressing themselves in a safe place um i never really had the opportunity to teach a specific type of music. Um, I did lead the vocal music, so we had a chorus. So I did lead that for a while, and that was that was okay. Um, I I couldn't run it the way I had hoped I had wanted to, so it was a it was really challenging for me. Um, but my favorite thing is just to introduce introduce little kids to the world of music music and expressing themselves. So I don't know that I even have a favorite type of music even to listen to. I like all kinds, it depends on my mood. Like sometimes I really want something with a good drum beat. Sometimes I want something a little more mellow. So I really think it's just, I get excited when the students get excited to learn. So that's what I like to teach when they're engaged and whatever that is. Yeah. Okay, here we have a few questions. Therapia, go ahead and ask the question. Yes, sir. Hi, ma'am. My name Hi. is Terry Pia. I am studying seventh grade. My hobbies are reading books, playing games, and watching TV. My life and business to become a software engineer. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Yes, please. What does your life coach really do? What? Okay, yes. So um, this is a question I get a lot, even from my own clients and family and friends. Yeah. So life coaching is... um. It's kind of a growing career. So there's not a lot of coaches, but it is growing globally. Um, and so when you become a coach, if you think about like your sports teams or your athletes, you sometimes have a coach or even a teacher is sometimes considered a, like a coach. So when I left teaching, going into coaching was really a smooth transition because what I do is I really help people identify their goals, things that they want to do in their life. And we get really clear about what that is. So um, sometimes people have general ideas of what they want to do, but they, they're not specific of what to do. And when you're not specific on a goal, it's really hard to get there. Um, so I help people really get specific on their goals. And then um, we identify what's getting in the way what's what's challenging what's what's going to come up that might stop them from getting their goal and then um we work to overcome those things and, and and move past them and then i really take take a look at each individual person that i'm working with and what they have for strengths 
and we try to use their strengths to move them toward the goal. So in life coaching, there's a lot of different types of coaching. There's health coaching. Health coaches kind of just work on like your body and your mental health as well. There's business coaching. So those people are looking for help growing their their work. Um, Sometimes there is um, more specific like educational coaching. Um, there's, There's lots of different little areas you can go into, but I have a pretty broad area in life coaching in that any aspect of your life, whether it's, I can do some health coaching, I can do some Um, mindset coaching. I can do helping you with your relationships. I can do um, habits, a lot of habits. Um, And what what I'm finding right now, the clients that I have right now, I'm spending a lot of time working on their, um, a lot of people refer to it as work-life balance um, or harmony. So knowing how to structure your day in a way that you're present when you're at work, but you're also present when you're family and you're not spending too much time in one world or the other so that you can just feel happy. And what I, I say, what I do is I help people who are okay, they're feeling okay, they're feeling good, and I want to make them feel great. And the way to do that is to really tap into what's important to them and um, figure out a way to bring that more into their life. So improving relationships, improving their habits, improving their schedules, improving um, their health, all those things can fall under life coaching. So it's really what, depending on what the person I'm working with um, wants to focus on. So. Yeah, that's a great thing. It's actually about you. (laughs) Hi, ma'am. My name is Aishwarya. I'm studying from the grade. I am probably at old my hobbies are reading books playing games and watching tv my future ambition is to become a police officer can i ask a question ma'am yes how much do life coaches charge <laughs> well that depends on the life coach there are some life coaches that charge a lot hundreds of dollars for an hour session not me. <laughs> I actually don't charge very much. And the reason for that is um, I work with a, or an organization that's called a nonprofit here in the United States, which means our whole organization is structured in a way to serve people and not make as much money as we can. So I, um, my prices are a lot lower than any coach that I've actually even know in this area. Um, and the reason for that is, um, like I said, I, I want to be accessible so that people can come to me and money's not the reason that they can't come to me. I, I'm really on a mission to help. And the organization that I'm with um, is really kind of cool because not only do we offer this these mental health services, but we also are trained to introduce the client's spirituality if they have one. Um, we can integrate their spirituality. And that's whatever their spirituality is, not what ours is, not what, what mine is. What the, we actually, all of our therapists come from very different religious backgrounds. Um, but what we can offer is when the client comes to us, if they want to introduce their spirituality into the session, we're trained to do that. So, and that's whatever, whatever it could be. Um, it could be Christian. It could be Muslim. It could be agnostic. It could be atheistic, whatever they bring to us that they want in. We have a moral obligation to figure out, even if it's not one that I personally practice, I am committed to learning about it so that I can help integrate it into their sessions. And, and that's one kind of thing that's really neat about our organization that is, is unique um, and not all of our um, sister organizations can offer that. So we have some special training with that and that's what's really cool. Um, and I, I really like doing that. I think that's a in the world of mental health, I think that's a piece that's really important, but sometimes gets ignored, especially if you're going with a medical, um, a medical practice. Uh, some, 
they're just not trained or, or not comfortable bringing in that spiritual world. And I think that's really a, such a huge, if it's part of our, our life, it's a huge piece that should be brought into our sessions. So if that's what the client wants, we can offer it. And if it's not what the client wants, we don't, we don't do it. You know, it's really all focused on what the, what the client wants. So um, to answer your question in a whole lot of the reason I don't charge as much as I probably could is because of the structure of the organization that I'm with. Hi. Nandri, are you there? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hello, ma'am. This is Nandini. I'm studying eighth grade. Would you allow me to ask a question? I would love for you to ask a question. Do all schools need life coaches? Oh, okay. So this is a good question. Um, do they need them? I think counseling and life coaching is a really important thing for all schools to have. Do they all have life coaches? I actually don't know of any schools that have life coaches um, here in the United States. Where you might see that show up is at like the college level when people are trying to figure out what they want to study, what they want to do in their adult life. And they, they tend to call those people career coaches or career counselors here in the United States. I don't know of any life coaching that happens in the lower level education. However, there are counselors um, and there's a difference. I'm not a therapist. I, I, I can't be a counselor. Um, there's things that I can do that, or that they can do that I cannot. Um, but that's kind of where life coaching tends to come in more of the higher grades and into the adult life. So where you would see it in a school is probably in that upper education college level where people are trying to figure out what they want to do with their life or what they want to do with their future. Nagalakshmi, it's your turn. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. This is Nagalakshmi. I am in ninth grade and my hobbies are reading books and playing games. Can I ask one question, ma'am? Yes, please. Could you please tell us about favorite Indian music instrument? Oh, okay. So um, I'm not super familiar with all of the ones, but I do love the unique sound that different cultures bring. And I love it when um, it's incorporated into western music as well i think just because it makes that it's that special unique sound i really like the sitar I, I don't know if i'm saying it correctly um i do like that and i'm a big drum person i love drums so um i think it's called the uh what's it called the, the tabla is that is that it i like drums i really like drums um i like getting in drum circles and playing with them um, and so I think that that's a set of two, right? The tabla, I think it is. I'm not sure. It's tabla. It's tabla. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like that. Those kinds of drums where it's got the skin on the top and the different, um, I like big drums. <laughs> so, so that one. And then I was also, um, when I was learning about sound bowls, I was also interested to know that um, the, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Jal Tarang, Jal, it's a set of bowls, and I think they're metal. Jal Tarang. Yeah, and you put water in them, and I would love to get my hands on a set of them to see how similar they are to the bowls that I play, um, but I know the set that I have has seven bowls, and I think the Jal Tarang has like 16 to 22, like there's a lot. Um, and, and you pitch them by the amount of water. And so there's play differently, but I, I, always, I think that's really cool too. And it's kind of where I connect, like, Ooh, I would, I would love to get my hands on a set and, and play around with them. <laughs> so Bhagya states your turn. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. My name is Bhagya Sri. I'm studying ninth grade. My hobbies are reading books and playing games. My future ambition is to become a doctor. Shall I ask one question, ma'am? Yes, please. What skills do you need to be a life coach? Uh, you have to be a really good listener. Really good listener. You have to be patient. Um, and a lot of the times there's some silence in a session where some people are uncomfortable with that, but that allows for the person to really think about their response. Um, 
But what I do as a life coach, I spend most of my time asking questions, asking questions and um, listening to the person's response. And that often opens up other questions. Um, and if I notice they're saying something, but they're wanting to make a goal or a plan that doesn't quite, if it doesn't seem like it matches, I might challenge that and like point that out. I observe and I reflect back to the client, what they're saying to me and what I'm hearing. And that really, what we believe as life coaches is that you have your answers in you already but sometimes they're really hard to find. You get, you know, you, you're stressed and your thoughts are not clear and it's, it's, it's muddy and foggy. And what my job is to do is to help clarify that. So I do that through questioning and listening. Rachel, uh, I think uh, my students have almost completed their questions and uh, I have a question actually when it uh, comes to the, the life coaching. So how much time do you usually take to counsel them? It depends on the client. And uh, so how much time usually you spare for your client? Yeah, so sessions, the first session is usually an hour and a half. So that's, so we can get really clear on what we're doing and what we want to focus on. And then sessions after that are usually an hour, 60 minutes. Um, and some people want to do that every week. Some people like to spread it out a little bit more every other week. Um, I like that. I don't like to go for longer than that because it's hard to keep the client accountable on their goals because what they do at the end of the session is usually set like a smaller goal of something they need to do between now and our next session to move forward toward their bigger goal. So depending, it really depends on their goal of how far apart our sessions are because it's, it's hard to keep people, the more, the longer time in between I work with them, it's harder to keep them accountable. But if it's a really long-term goal, I would be willing to go out maybe a month, um, but it's meant to be kind of a fast paced process. Usually 12 sessions is, is about how many it takes, depending on the goal. If it's, you know, if it's a smaller goal, it might not take that long. If it's a bigger goal, it might take way more than that. But Usually eight to 12 sessions is like a happy spot to really hone in, at least on a, a, on a goal that they can get clear enough in that time to move forward. So I really optimistic that in your new career path, you are going to, I think you are going to realize whatever the dreams and hopes you are going to achieve in this new career. I am sure <laughs> I that- so. You love each and every career that you opt. I'm, I'm really optimistic and I wish that you will definitely succeed in this new way of life. So before we wrap up this session, could you please give a, a message to my students? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I truly think anything's possible if you are willing to open yourself up to opportunities. And I also have learned in all of my career changes that sometimes it's okay to just be, just allow and not try to control everything. I have found that when I can release control and just be like, okay, what's next? What am I supposed to be doing? Some of my greatest opportunities come in that way versus when I try to plan things out and which is funny because I'm a life coach and I teach people to plan things out but sometimes there's a place for stepping back and just being and allowing to receive what's supposed to be there for you because that's where some of the magic happens um and some of the greatest blessings happen and and there's a place for having control over things and making a plan and there's also a place for waiting to see what you're meant to do and, and waiting to receive that message however that shows up so So that's a, a great message. So between life coach and music, which is your most favorite? Oh, I don't know because they both, they're so different. And um, I have found at this point with all the different careers that I've had that I like music to be something that I do in my personal life and share with others. And I don't want to make it my career. Um, so. 
I need a balance of both. I need a place in my life where I'm offering service and that's where my job is. But I also need a place that the music is really, even though it's, it's for everyone, it's for me too. Um, so I can't answer a favorite because they both play different roles in my life. So Okay. Uh, yes. Um, so would you like to show anything to my students? Uh, we have hardly four, four minutes time is left. Uh, would you like to show yeah. you? Yeah. So I want to show you the bowl. So the last time I was with your students, we did some singing and I played the piano a little bit. And um, But I thought this was kind of special because this is what I'm doing most of my time with. And what these are is a set of crystal quartz bowls. They're hollow in the middle and they sit on these little rings. And what happens is, um, when you tap them with a mallet of such sort, you can tap them or you can, and I'll show you how to do this, or you can um, rub it around the edge. What it does is produces a pitched sound vibration and our bodies respond to sound waves, just like water responds to sound waves. And if you think about it, our bodies are largely made of water. So, and what that does is help our, um, our bodies move into a more relaxed state. Sometimes the, the molecules within the water in our bodies kind of, they move into a more structured pattern um, and that just helps bring some calm to us. So each, each bowl has a different pitch and I'll back up and show them to you a little bit and I'll just play through a couple of them. But when I play, it's really just what, what feels good in my heart. Um, what feels good and what, oh, gotta move back a little bit. Can you see? Here, I'll move it down there. So I have this set here in front of me. And really when I play, they work on different parts of our, our body. So it is believed that this lower bowl that I'm playing right now works more on feeling safe, um, feeling supported, your foundation. Um, and you can hear they're each different pitched. Sometimes they sound really nice together and sometimes they sound a little, but that's on purpose because then it feels, sounds really good when they do. You can hear that sounds a little bit nicer with that bowl than these ones. They kind of sound almost like they're clashing a little bit. And so each of these are pitched hear that and so what I do is I really just play through especially when I'm in a yoga class I'm looking at what they're stretching what positions they're in um some people uh think that the bowls are aligned to different chakras in the system and so I kind of watch what parts I'm I'm familiar with the chakra system so I watch what parts in the in the yoga that they're working on and I play the bowl that is associated with that part of the body and Sometimes I just come down here in my basement and just play. It helps me meditate. It helps me pray. It helps me quiet my mind. It just has a real nice soothing sound to it. And then you can stop them just by touching them because it's just vibrating. All it is is vibrating. <laughs> 